What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and welcome to the next crazy stuff in War Robots, like this. Pop! Executed. Yes, 20, 15 to 25% range, somewhere like that. Here, a Titan. Pop! Executed. Yes, that's fair. That's War Robots now. You press a button and things just die. And uh, it wouldn't even be so bearable if we hadn't, as a community as a whole, with every single person, player, YouTuber, refused and rejected the executioner module on the test server before. Pixonic acted like they listened to us, they didn't bring the module, and here it is, built into a robot! Woo! Yes, we love when you don't listen to us, Pixonic, because clearly, you know better, yeah? Clearly, you know better, because we've clearly seen it in the de decreasing player numbers and the community being just increasingly unhappy. <laughs> Whatever. Let's show you the new content because not everybody and not everything is bad. There are some things I really enjoy. For example, the stake, the new harpoon weapon. You're gonna see all of it in this video with the new legendary pilot, the new Kestrel drone and everything. And I'm gonna show you what is balanced and what is horribly unbalanced. Um, because there can't be an update without game-breaking things coming into the game, right? This, however, in my opinion, is none of them. It's actually a very, very interestingly and fun weapon. On the test server, they, it was overpowered with 60, 70,000 HP shield. Very little damage output, though. Now they changed it, they gave it more damage output, but it has only a 20,000 HP shield generator on the weapon and only 150 meters range. So you actually really have to get close with this one to make this weapon work. And that's how you design a weapon. It has strength in short range, never having to reload, powerful damage output and a bit of a shield, but you have to get close. So strength, but drawback. Well, well done, Pixonic. That's how you design. Uh, that's game design right there. Uh, and here we have a pilot that is, seems okay to me. Two, th two second longer ability duration for uh, the Lynx robot. That's a special ability. Also worth noting is that the Lynx has a special perk, the defense expert or the speed ver variant, speed expert, where you get when your ability is running more, a little bit more defense points or a little bit more speed. 10% speed or 20 defense points. However, I figured out that since you're stealth during your ability, you don't technically typically get shots. So better go with the speed version, not what I'm using here. Anyways, let's go uh, into the Kestrel drone and to the first real nasty thing in my opinion. This drone is an absolute horrible idea, Pixonic, because it combines things that it shouldn't combine. Um, the Armadillo drone is the drone that's supposed to give you on-kill boosts. That's its job. This drone gives you on-kill 25% more HP and 25 and it restores gray HP as well even past your maximum gray HP like lifesaver from the turret You can increase your maximum robot HP with this on kill. Yeah, that's a great idea uh, And the kill on kill you also get 20% more speed boost that is that is outrageous But that if that was all that it did I could live with it, but here comes the kicker This is actually an assassin drone its job is not to to do this its job is to Increase your damage output because it applies a passive death mark to your enemy 25% more damage output period Bam. And then 7% additional damage output running through the entire match for you so 33% passive increase of damage by just having this drone max and on kill you get all your HP restored tip te uh, te all the time your HP restored you get gray HP restored as well you see we're starting with a robot here let's take a look at the stats the stats of this robot are 160,000 HP 70 KP it's why does everything that comes into the game have to be so ridiculously fast? Um, and then it says here, Ferociously, that's the, the instant kill executioner. It I don't know, it lists two times. It t lists it at 15% and 25%. I don't know why it does it both. Maybe it says this is the, the, mm, the range at which it can happen, but it can happen below 15% as well. So, I don't know, can it happen at 25% already? Probably, because it's listed here. I don't know why they include both values. What is that? What did I just do? I don't know. Um, let's go back into the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's the thing, right? But if you look at our HP, we have 200,000 already, not 160,000, because it's the life server. And you'll see over the course of this video, with the Kestrel drone and the battleship increasing my HP every time I do stuff, and I will come out with 330,000 HP later. How is this fair? How is this a glass cannon robot? Remember, the uh, the Lynx robot itself already has an ability similar to the Nether robot where you have to deal a certain amount of damage to get past its initial resistance point before you can actually steal, start dealing damage, right? It already has that, 
which it doesn't need because it's already ridiculously powerful with its stealth. It doesn't need that, but it's a new robot, so it gets it anyway, right? That's game design now in War Robots. And, um, and then, of course, see, now we have 20, 224,000 HP. You can execute things instantly, including Titans. You're going to see a lot of that here. Uh, and then you increase your maximum HP also further while being... F it's like speed hack fast. It's like I'm speed hacking. I'm so fast. The, like, I could get, get from one side of the map to the other in like 10 seconds. It's a little bit slower than a speed hack, perhaps, maybe. Look at the damage output from the stake. It's very high. But this is where I say it seems fair to me because... Although you never have to reload, you always have this damage output, you have to get insanely close to make it work. And there is a big drawback with this. So on long range maps or uh, things, you have a real problem. And that's uh, where I think, um, where they did a great job with the game design. Um, but putting the module back in, the executioner module, just in form of a, of a robot ability now, it's just not fair, it's just not right. It shouldn't be there. Uh, imagine playing free for all. Every time you press your ability button, the guy at 25% HP or 20% instantly dies. You get every kill. You get every kill. How can you win in free for all against a player who can instantly decide that this enemy is your kill now? Just because he's a low HP. You would have to deal so much damage that at 30% you one hit the last the, uh, everything he's got left so that the uh, the guy with his ferocious skill doesn't get the kill. It doesn't even seem to be, seem to be thought through. Pixonic free to, free to um, free for all is a valid game mode in your game. Did you even think what it means for free for all to bring this into the game? Do you even think about this? I I just don't understand how you can bring in these additions to the game. Like uh, like this uh, uh, executioner here, and I, okay, he wasn't executed because I wasn't running the ability. You have to be running the ability, then it, you, you can fire this shot. And don't get me wrong, there are like the the weapon is pretty cool, and the robot itself seems cool to me as well. I just I just I'm strongly against this executioner part of it. Everything else is fine to me. It's this part that we have all every single player and YouTuber have gazette. We don't want it in the game. We hate it. We don't want it. It's a terrible idea. Scratch that. And then, Pixonic, you acted like you heard us. You didn't bring the module. And we like, okay, cool. Nice. They listen to us. And there we go. Here I'm fighting one of the most powerful titans in the game. Aminos with the new uh, uh, plasma... With these na not, not super new anymore, but still relatively new. Uh, plasma shotgun versions here. Uh, Maha Vara or Maha. Uh, or no, just Vajra, I think it's called. And I'm too fast. He couldn't hit me. I was just dashing. <laughs> every time he's trying to shoot me and everybody... It's impossible to hit this fast thing. It's so fast. And then at the end, I can just simply decide to execute him if I want to. Uh, even through reflectors, by the way. Your Luchador activating your, his reflector. Your Minos Titan activating his reflector. Minos. Yeah. Um... And, uh, and your Seraph, no, uh, Aether Titan flying up in his, um, force field, or whatever it's called, uh, it doesn't matter. You are below 25% health or 20, or whatever, right? Pop, you're done. Pop, it's just, it's, you're just killed. You're just killed, no matter how much HP you still have, and how much, what ability is running, doesn't matter. Pop, you're gone. Because this is the Executioner now. By the way, look at my HP. What's happened to my 160,000 HP? Yeah, okay, you can argue that this is a different problem. It's, or maybe not even a problem. I, maybe I earned this HP now because I killed so many things. Uh, but as a matter of fact, it was pretty easy to kill all those things, despite being anglers and seraphs and whatnot. Because the damage output is high, and I have on this robot the necessary speed to always get close, right? A Capri would not be easy to catch for many people. For this thing, it's the easiest thing in the world, because it's ridiculously fast. By the way, I had a desync then, uh, and I could no longer deal damage. I don't know, I was desynced. It's a, just a bit of a bug. Happens sometimes, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so, uh, this robot works very well with a stake weapon. I would imagine that, for example, a behemoth probably doesn't work too well with it. You can do it. You will have a good amount of shielding and so on, but you're not very fast. So things or enemies who know your 150 meters range, right now it's a new weapon, not everybody knows how it works. By the way, look how he, he has got no chance because I'm stealth for so long. 
Um, but new, uh, new, new weapons, people don't know the range so much yet. But in the future, they will know the range of this weapon. And then you will see that a behemoth will probably struggle very hard to get in a situation where you can use these weapons very effectively. Um, so, great. I, I think it's a good release with the harpoon weapon. I, I think it's a, a well-designed, well well-brought well idea. The Lynx seems okay to me, even though I would say it's too fast. To me, really, it is too fast, this robot. I think there are should, there should be certain limits you should stay within. Because if you cross maps in 10 seconds, there are certain things just don't work. It just bypasses mechanics of the game that are important. That's just on a side note, though, because I noticed that all new things are becoming increasingly fast. Sarah flies over the whole map in like five or ten seconds, and he fly he can do this even in the beginning. He now it's a little shorter, but in the beginning he could fly the map two times. He could fly one time and back into the other. Like you can fly in the enemy base, unload your devastators, which I did in a video, and then you fly back in your home base before your ability runs out. How is this fair? How is this a good idea? You know. So yeah, things are just tech generally becoming too fast for the game for for how the game the map weapons and things are designed that's just a little different topic i think but overall the links would be fine if it wasn't for the executioner part if you ask me that's the biggest problem because we clearly refused it we didn't want it and anyways it's here uh the kestrel drone mm, too much passive damage output and uh, this, gray, this, this entire healing and gray HP healing, it shouldn't be there. This is an assassin drone. Its job is to increase your damage output, obviously. And we have a stone, scissor, paper kind of principle in the game. But for a while now, Pixonic is taking this out of order. New things are usually now stone, scissor and paper at the same time. Take a look at the Titans. They all can heal themselves now. The new meta titans can all heal themselves all the time. You don't need a Nodens in your team anymore. You don't need certain conditions to be met. No, you're just all of that in one. Because you have that new meta thing. And is it really what you want, Pixonic, that the new things are just the universal can-do-everything things? Is this really what you want? I don't know. Personally, me, it drives me away from the game. Because I like when... Things are strong in one situation, or are very tricky in this, but they have a drawback in another situation, so that you have to use it well. I like that part. And uh, allowing new things to have all universal super things, everything combined, just uh, isn't a very good idea as the game divine, from a balancing standpoint. But yeah. Um, I think I've said everything I need to say about the balancing aspects of the new items. So let's just uh, look at some of the gameplay and enjoy it. By the way, I also updated the music here um, on the channel because I've been running the same music for so long that I feel like it was really time and also got some comments like this because I do read your comments, guys. Even though I may not respond to all of them and I may not catch all of them, but I try to catch as many as I can. Uh, and I also read the comments that the music has become quite repetitive on the channel here, by the way. That was an execute. My ability was running, so pop, there he goes at 30%. Or 25. Um, and so, yeah, I've sit down, I've uh, uh, filed a new playlist. Mm, and I, uh, some of the songs are cooler, some of the songs are less cool, but <laughs> I hope you, you like them overall. Even though I know that music taste is very subjective. But if you find a video or a song here that you say, man, this thing really ruins the video for me, let me know, okay? <laughs> can I, I can remove it. Okay. So, getting myself a shield and uh, some durability restore from the durability extender turret on the battleship. Another topic, in my opinion, battleships have no place in this game. They simply have no place in the game. Can you request air support in World of Tanks? No. You have dedicated artillery players, which I already hate. <laughs> I hate artillery in the game, but it's part of the game since the beginning. And players play artillery, and their job is to be artillery. But can every tank just request an air support, give himself some, I don't know, HP back, and uh, airstrike the enemy and give himself shield or whatever? No. No, because World of Tanks and Wargaming knows how free-to-play is done right. They have a business model that sustains itself for more than a decade now. And it's still growing and and running running fine. 
Because they know when you want to use your crew on another tank, you can't make the player spend $150 for it. Because he already spent for the crew, he already trained the crew, give him them the crew perks. And they understand free to play done right means you let the player pay a little, little, little bit, right? You have to, you give them a little service, they can use that crew on another tank as well. But you have to retrain the crew for this tank and it costs 250 gold per gold member, uh, per crew member. And uh, that equals around, what, two bucks for all crew. Some tanks even less because they only have three crew members. Some tanks have five, six crew members and it's twice as much. Okay, but it's like one to two bucks to retrain all your crew for the new tank you want to use them in. Pop. The modules, you just swap them into the new tank. And you go. Except for very some very special modules. Um, free to play done right. Don't make people spend $150 re... Uh, reselecting the crew, like having the crew lottery again, or re-choosing the crew perks, uh, the pilot perks, and then, you know, let them then, letting them, uh, resetting them to zero, and letting them upgrade them once again, even though they've already done all this before. I don't want to talk about it anymore, because I did this in the last video. Um, if you want <laughs> rants and complaining, <laughs> go to the last video, there's plenty of it! Um, but in this one here, I didn't want to really do this, but however, I need to say what things seem to be out of balance. Um, and uh, here, being able to execute a resistant reflecting luchador is not in balance with the game mechanic and uh, the game. But yeah, so that's the video so far, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my opinion on the new items and uh, pretty much all of it shown you here, here to you here um and did some damage did some good kills free for all great, great game mode overall and also a game mode where you can test new content uh and find out how balanced it is that's why i really like it mm, again some things are great in this update some things are not so great and uh, some things are just plain and simply wrong like, and the executioner part on the links being that one. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, Pixonic can also see some some, um, some sense in my, uh, in my reasoning here. And uh, maybe they will look at it. I'm hoping. I don't know. But, yeah, for now, thanks for watching. Have a good one and catch you in the next video. Money signing off. Bye-bye.